to the inauguration of Donald John Trump. My 15-year-old self wrote a text that I'm going to dig up today. I will read it to you, and then reflect on which of my fears have come true. The name of the text is Where have you been on January the 20th? The unbelievable happened. On January 20th, 2017, Donald Trump became President of the United States of America. What else happened that day? Well, I personally went to school in the morning and didn't really do anything in the afternoon. Later I went to the bank and to have my piggy bank slaughtered. Trump would like to weaken the power of the banks, although as a billionaire he must have had a lot of fun with them. Then I watched a few videos on the Austrian channel Star Wars Stories, which, as its name suggests, tells all kinds of stories in one of the best fictional universes ever. If you say anything else about Star Wars, you don't know what's good. Star Wars is a good keyword here. How many wars will there be on the American flag, which has a few stars on it, the next time? Then I listened to the album Elephant by the band Black Eyed Peas. This band consists of a black man, a half Asian, a Mexican and a woman. All members of groups of people that Trump really appreciates. There is no need to go into his famous inauguration speech. He rattled off his motto Make America Great Again for almost half an hour. When, while zapping, I came across the new president's festive lunch, which was being televised, and the speaker said something along the lines of There's shrimps and a souffle. It made me think. If you watch any history channels today, these programs are flooded with documentaries about Adolf Hitler. In it, you learn irrelevant things like which toilet did he use after he took the office? Didn't he have a better hairdresser? Or where did that stupid hairstyle come from? Or why did he speak like that? Uh, that he just get a lobotomy? Or why does Ben Hockey mimic him all the time? Will it be somewhat similar in 60, 70 years from now on? The first lunch of Donald Trump's tenure consisted of shrimps and souffle. Meanwhile, counter demonstrators are pushed back by the police officers and provide images that are reminiscent of the coup attempt in Turkey. On the side of the Trump groupies, a woman holds up a sign that reads, Hate makes America great. So much for where is the love? A question arises to me. Is the whole world going crazy or is it my mind that is falling into a bottomless abyss? On January 20th, 2017, something could happen too. Just hours before Donald Trump, who wants to build a wall around Mexico because too many drug dealers come from there, officially saw his oath, Joaquin El Chapo Guzman Loera, was handed over to the United States. The Mexican was the most powerful drug lord in the world for a long time. Well, that was it. My masterpiece. Because I was too lazy to paint pictures for the reflection, you can see me how I'm trying to play Mass Effect 3 after over two years. At first, it struck me that Star Wars had a much better reputation before the Disney trilogy. Those were the days. The wars under the American flag have not yet been as bad as feared, but there is incredible potential. Trump makes China angry. That's not good. In both the US and Russia, have withdrawn from the INF Treaty Against Nuclear Weapons. That's a good either. Just as little as recognizing Jerusalem as the capital of Israel. This decision caused unrest in the Middle East, like the killing of the Iranian general Qasem Soleimani, which, by the way, was only this year. Do you remember when the biggest issue of 2020 was the possible Third World War? <laughs> Our innocence! I'm sure I've forgotten something, but as much stuff happened in a month under Trump as it does every year in normal presidency. At least, he calmed down Kim Jong-un, which is pretty much like something that nobody expected. You can also draw positive conclusions there. A less, a less positive conclusion can be made on the subject of minorities. There were more uprisings than there were during the French Revolution. 
But to what extent Trump is to blame for an actual growing inequality, or whether people are now just talking and taking a closer look, I cannot judge. After all, he has not yet achieved the status of Adolf Hitler. Although he's everywhere. And I mean everywhere. When you're on the bus, in a restaurant, or at work, at least two people are talking about Trump. At least once a day, you will hear someone make a joke about him or get angry with him. He's a cultural phenomenon, whether you like it or not. Good news, however, I had completely forgotten that Bernd Höcke or the attempted Turkish coup even existed. Yay! Also, he actually builds his wall, which should be sad, but still fills me with joy that something so bad shit insane is really being done. <laughs> You can't even think of that. Unless, of course, you're the President of the United States of America. But Trump isn't even the one that I'm afraid of, though. Michael Pence is causing me a headache. The fundamentalist Vice President of the Messiah Complex will win the next election, I'm certain. Either Trump wins and Pence diligently collects sympathy points from the American population, or Biden wins and he'll make such a mess that the Americans then choose Pence out of frustration. Then we really have a problem. Why couldn't you choose Bernie Sanders? But what should we do? What can we do? Let's see that the elections in our own country go better. Even if, to be honest, I'm also a little pessimistic. To cheer you up a bit, I offer you the additional nonsense playlist in the bottom left. Above that is my latest video. On the right you can subscribe. I wish you a nice day and choose wisely.